Good morning, it's Councillor Glenn, and this morning I'm at the W.J. Bell Rotary Peace Park. This is, um, it's on, the entrance is off of Cherry Drive, it's near Fernbank. Um, I don't know if you've ever been here before, but uh, this is a project that the Stittsville Rotary Club established uh, a few years back. So um, um, I just thought I'd come here today on the long weekend uh, as we enter into another COVID shutdown. Um, you know, here, look at this paragraph. Before your first step, pause, breathe, and give thanks. Listen to your heartbeat, be aware of your breathing, and quiet your mind. Just thought, you know, this weekend, if you're looking for some place to visit, something to do, um, come check out the Bell Rotary Peace Park and the, uh, the labyrinth here. Anyhow, I've got some updates this morning. I'm going to put my camera here on the tripod. I'm going to flip it around. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I was uh, chatting with my team yesterday about uh, what I should update this morning. And, and one thing this week is um, we're at a, a transition point with city operations right now. I'll give you some examples. Uh, at parks uh, like this one, uh, this is uh, just about the time when uh, the city starts doing maintenance on these parks. Uh, bringing back some of the garbage containers, putting up nets and basketball courts and tennis courts. It's actually much of the same staff, the same crew that handles winter road operations that also does the park maintenance. So right now they're still in winter road maintenance and pothole mode and then come mid-April they start to do park maintenance or in this this uh, strange middle period and I know when we get nice days sunny days uh, people want to get out and use the parks and we've had a lot of notes from folks about uh, park maintenance or about getting the nets up on pickleball courts it's coming soon um, it's, this uh, often happens when we have uh, that that early taste of spring weather the other thing is on uh, another example where this comes into play is around traffic safety um, we're in this period of the year uh, between when uh, we have snow banks, which provide kind of a, a natural traffic calming, and uh, the flex stakes and the other speed control measures that we put on the road. So we've got this gap of a few weeks where we start to get a lot of complaints about speeding in the community. Um, once we get the flex stakes in, in place, they tend to reduce speeds by five to, to 10 kilometers an hour, and it's really effective at bringing speeds down to a safe spot, but we're in this point right now where uh, we don't have that on our road. So I, I do want to ask everyone just to take care. Watch your speed, please, and make sure you're traveling uh, under the speed limit when you're in our residential communities. There's lots of people out walking, cycling, exploring neighborhoods, so please be careful there. Um, I have a bunch of updates. Uh, where should I start? Let's see. How about on development? We have a lot of development files right now. It's been a very busy spring. If you go to my website at glengower.ca slash development, you can see the full list, but I'll tell you about a few things. Uh, just yesterday, we posted a new development application for 21 Huntmar. This is across from the Food Basics and just north of the keg. Uh, there's an application there for a six-story apartment building. So that is allowed in the zoning, but there's a site plan control that's required. One of the um, pauses about this one is if it gets built, they would be required to build traffic lights at the Food Basics entrance, which is pretty important. I know there's some traffic concerns and we will be uh, talking about that and addressing that as we go. Uh, on April 7th, that's this week, we have a public meeting for 5725 Fernbank. This is a large uh, plan of subdivision for part of the Fernbank community near Fernbank and Robert Grant in the south part of that community. On April 15th, we have a public meeting for 6111 Hazeldean Road. That is uh, McEwen's proposal. There's a Starbucks, an oil changers, not an oil changers, uh, a Jiffy Lube, an oil changing facility, and a large car wash at 6111 Hazeldean next to the Giant Tiger. On April 27th, we're doing a public meeting for 1837 Maple Grove Road. Uh, that's where the old uh, stone houses are located. So I talked about that last week. Stone houses are being proposed to be retained, and there's some townhomes that are proposed for that property. So that's April 27th. And we haven't finalized it yet, but we're going to do a public meeting for 723 Putney. This is some low-rise apartments. Um, Robert Grant... Um, Robert Grant and Putney, just north of Bobolink, I believe it is. Anyways, uh, glengower.ca slash development. And as we get these details confirmed, we also post them as Facebook events as well. So you can keep track of that. 
Uh, over on Victor Street, uh, construction is progressing well for the Hazeldean Crossing subdivision. I got a note from the builder last week that the blasting operations are all done there. So thankfully the blasting is done. They have asked and have re received approval to extend their Victor Street partial road closure until April 14th. They had a bit of an issue with um, uh, some of their crew members testing positive for COVID. So they had to shut down their, their site and uh, they're, they're one of the reasons they've had this delay. So they're hoping to finish up before April 14th, but they do have permission from the city to keep that road closed up until April 14th. And the other construction thing is the Hazeldean Bridge. Uh, there's gonna be some repairs and maintenance to the Hazeldean Bridge. It'll involve reductions of lanes at some times. April 19th is a target date for that. I'll be sharing some more information in the next week or so about what that entails. Uh, we're trying to get that done. Uh, we tried to get it done last year, but some of the delays in construction due to COVID pushed it to the spring, and we're trying to get it done as soon as possible before traffic really starts to pick up uh, later on uh, this year as we start to move out of the pandemic situation. Uh, OC Transpo, we had a big transit commission meeting last week uh, about OC Transpo and some pretty big changes to service as a result of continuing changes to the uh, due to the pandemic. Um, I'll, I'll highlight quickly what it means for Stittsville. In Stittsville, the express routes, the 200 series that run morning rush hour, afternoon rush hour, we're reducing the frequency. Um, some of them uh, would go 15 or 20 minutes. We're gonna reduce that to a 30 minute frequency just to recognize the continuing low number of riders. But what we are doing, and it's significant, and it's something that I've actually been pushing for for a couple of years, is to improve service to the retail areas and to the industrial parks um, here in the community here in Stittsville. So we're gonna be improving service to the Route 62. Um, it's gonna start running on Saturdays and Sundays, which it never did before. It's gonna be running at 30 minute intervals rather than 60 minutes. I'd like to get it to 15, but 30 minutes is a start. Um, also, most of the trips, just about all the trips, are going to come all the way to Stittsville. Up to now, most of the trips ended at Terry Fox in Canada. And I know this is a route that a lot of students would use as well to get home from school. And I heard a lot of stories of students who, um, uh, would would get someone to pick them up, a family member to pick them up at Terry Fox, or uh, uh, you know uh, take a, a taxi or an Uber from Terry Fox. So we're extending that to Stittsville, so it's better service to Stittsville, and also significantly, it's a better service for uh, people who work in retail on Hazeldean Road, people who work on Iber Road. I know there's a lot of people still going to essential work at the warehouses and uh, and and industries and businesses on Iber Road. So Route 62, big improvements coming later this spring. You can see on my website. Okay, I think I got all of the local updates. Yes, and I wanted to talk a little bit about COVID. We are in a shutdown, so urging everyone to please uh, limit your trips outside of the home. It is Easter weekend. It is Passover. Uh, we have Ramadan coming up. Uh, asking people, please, not to uh, not to do a celebration with with. Uh, people from outside your household. Um, you know what I'm doing this weekend is uh, this afternoon, I'm meeting up with my brother and we're gonna go for a walk outside. On, on Monday, meeting up with my parents and uh, we're, we're gonna do a outside uh, meetup for Easter. So I'm hoping the weather warms up a little bit. Uh, but this is, again, has to be a very different Easter than what we're used to. Um, we still are seeing a lot of the transmission happening in social gatherings, uh, families, friends, and so on. A few workplaces as well but uh, we, we, can all, uh, we can all be doing more, I think, to uh, uh, help stop the spread of COVID in our community. As far as vaccines go, I checked the numbers this morning on, the, on OttawaPublicHealth.ca. Uh, we have delivered 151,000 doses, including 124,000 people who've had their first dose. So some people, uh, for example, uh, people in long-term care homes have had two doses. Uh, most people have had one. So 124,000 people have had one dose and that represents 13% of the adult population here in Ottawa. So we are making progress. As of Monday, everyone 70 years old and older was eligible for an appointment. Now, uh, we didn't have enough appointments to meet the demand because we're still not getting enough vaccines from the provincial government. And this is a problem. Um, the provincial government sets the availability and then Ottawa sets up appointments based on our projected vaccine availability over the next uh, two to four weeks. We simply haven't received enough vaccines from the province in order 
to set up enough appointments. We have the resources, we have the staff, we have the clinics. We just need to get those vaccines from the province and the federal government so we can keep delivering vaccines. There were more appointments that came available yesterday for 70 plus. So uh, uh, those were uh, booked up very, very quickly. There's also some priority groups. Uh, I posted some information on my website yesterday. It's got a list of different priority groups uh, due to uh, health issues, due to uh, uh, workplace situations. Um, so even if you're not over 70, there are some situations where you are eligible for a vaccine. So I've shared some information there. Um, in, in, you can look down and see how to get in touch and book an appointment. The other thing is we have a number of pharmacies in Ottawa, including several in Canada and Stittsville, who will be offering vaccines. This is a provincial program. It's not Ottawa Public Health. So you've got to go to the uh, Ontario.ca website for information about which, uh, which pharmacies, who's eligible, and how to book a vaccine. So... Um, lots of information there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I was very glad in the shutdown that schools are remaining open. Um, I spoke with Dr. Etches on Monday. Um, we have a, a regular check-in that we do and she was saying um, we still are not seeing significant transmission within schools. There are uh, positive cases at schools, but they're coming from the community. We're not seeing a lot of spread or transmission within the schools themselves. I checked this morning. As of this morning, there are 10 outbreaks at schools across the entire city. Now, there's a lot of schools in Ottawa. Um, and in most cases, those are one or two students or, or one teacher where there, there has been transmission at the schools. But you know, the best way to keep schools open and keep the number of cases and transmission at schools low is to control the transmission in the community. But schools are so important. I remember a phrase Dr. Etch has used, um, schools are the essential work of children. And it's incredibly important to their education, yes, but also to their mental health uh, that they be able to have access to the classroom, especially elementary school kids. And I know because I've been hearing from parents how difficult it is when kids uh, can't go to school, whether they're, uh, they've had a close contact or, um, or, or, or whether there's a, you know, we had the school shutdowns back in January. So really hoping that we can keep the schools open. It's very important to our community and to, uh, to, to, to everyone, to parents, to students. And uh, uh, so... I uh, just wanted to mention that before we wrapped up today. That is all my updates. That seems like a lot. Um, it's already getting warmer, so I hope today you get a chance to explore our community. Find some place to take a walk. Maybe you can get your bike out today. Maybe drop by the Rotary Peace Park here on uh, Cherry Drive in the south part of Stittsville. Have a great Easter. Happy Passover. And I'll talk to you at about this time next Saturday. Take care.